Hello everyone, continuing with our study of the perfect will of God, we want to talk in this session about Joshua, the son of Nun. He was the person that was with Moses <clears throat> through many things, many trials and temptations that Moses, <clears throat> excuse me, went through. Uh, Joshua was there with him. Been a lot of those and learned a lot from from Moses, the man of God. So we want to get into the perfect will of God. Last week was where Moses had went on the backside of the desert. You can look at that and bring yourself up to date. We want to look at the perfect will of God in our lives. Let's bow our heads and pray today. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of your Son, Jesus, asking that you anoint every single word through and by the power of the Holy Ghost that comes forth today, Lord, that it would be for your glory. We bring our hearts, minds, and souls into agreement with your word, that upon that we base our lives and live our lives according to your word. We ask that the hearts of those that's listening receive this message, Lord, for your glory to uplift you. Thank you. We see in our last study in the Bible how God allowed Moses to do what Moses thought was best. There are lots of times when we want to do things that's out of the will of the Lord that God lets us do. He doesn't interfere with us, so now we're going to take a look at what Joshua did underneath Moses for many years and how Joseph was, Joshua, I'm sorry, Joshua, not Joseph, Joshua was spoken to by God after the death of Moses, given direction what to do. And we're going to see as we get into this uh, uh, more and more how this one individual had the anointing of the Holy Ghost and the witness of the Holy Ghost. That may seem a little strange, but we'll talk about as, that as we go. Uh, we know that under the law that um, people were saved by grace only and by faith. We know that bulls and goats could not take away sin. There's nothing we can offer to God today other than faith and uh, trust in Him that His grace will carry us through. I know there's times I, last couple of weeks I was very sick. I prayed to God by faith. Was it? Difficult? Yes, the flesh doesn't want to relinquish over to God what's God. I prayed in faith and God healed me. Now, would that mean that God heals me every single time? Let's talk about this in the study as we go. God's sovereign. He heals whom he wants to heal. The rest he leaves up to the doctors. Bring this up today a little bit about the time that Joshua lived, the blood of bulls and goats, it could not save people. Couldn't save them back. They offered up their lambs and that to take away the sin, but it wouldn't take it away. We had to have a Savior. We had to have a Redeemer that came into this world, and His name was Jesus Christ. So all of those sacrifices that was made under the law in Joshua's times and Moses and others as well. Those pointed to Jesus Christ and what he did at Calvary, how that, I want to kind of bounce around in this message here a little bit to get some things brought out that needs to be brought out. Those offerings from those goats and that pointed towards Jesus Christ and what he would do at Calvary. Today, we have to have faith in Jesus Christ. Now, there seems to me to be some confusion, thought, whatever, not from God. When we get saved, we're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, and that's called salvation, and we call that the gift of salvation from Jesus on the cross. Absolutely. Absolutely. That salvation is given to us. Our past sins are forgiven. God looks at us and says, Today I'm giving you a brand new start in life. There seems to be a lot of confusion about 
salvation and living the life for Jesus Christ. We must never forget what Jesus did at Calvary, never ever, but we must also carry forth what was brought forth at Calvary as well. Isaiah said he was bruised for our iniquities. Hallelujah, he was resurrected for you and I that we would have a resurrection one day. In this life, we have to look to Jesus Christ and no one else in our faith. Can we trust anyone? We trust those that have proven themselves to be in our lives. Maybe it's a husband, a wife, a child, or whatever, but our faith must never, ever be in anything other than Jesus Christ and what he did at Calvary. Somebody said, well, I don't understand. That was salvation. We're taking salvation and agree in 100,000%. But we also must realize that faith is what took Jesus to the cross. We look at him. Let's, let's maybe get off the subject today of the perfect will of God and talk about this. Jesus had faith in the Father. There was no doubt in his mind when he went to that cross that he would be resurrected. His prayers was to Jesus Christ. It wasn't to some unknown idol somewhere on the other side of the world. It was not to some book he read that inspired him to pray more. It was not some commentary that he got such a good thought out of that he thought, boy, I can use this to help myself in my walk with Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, without faith in Jesus Christ and what he did at Calvary, nothing in our lives can be accomplished through the Spirit. I heard someone say the other day, I'm giving you an example. My husband's trying to quit smoking. The Christian said to the other one, well, tell him to just, just taper back. Just have one once in a while. The flesh cannot overcome itself. It is mired down from Adam. We walk not by the flesh, but by the spirit. But we are in the flesh, which means we're in this body. We're gonna be persecuted. That means that we will have trials. That means we will have sickness. We will have disease in our life. Jesus went through all of this. He was tempted in all manners, and he overcame those. This is the only way that we can ever go forward in Jesus Christ is to believe in him and believe in him and only. I believe my man is a man of God, but my faith is not in him. My faith is not in my pastor. My faith is in the one that marched up that hill, knowing without a doubt in his mind that he would be coming out of that grave at some point in time for you and I. He did it for you and I. And yet I hear people say, boy, I've been watching this series and the man is so powerful. I just love following him. That's wonderful. He may give you some insights into the scripture, but follow Jesus. I don't mean to be loud, but things need to come to a point to where Paul said, I can do nothing of myself. I can't, I can't overcome sickness. How can I heal myself? By taking vitamin C, by staying in bed longer, having soup, having tea, hot tea, he said, I can only do that which Jesus Christ allows me to do, that I worship him in truth and spirit. Our faith, our faith. Where do we get our faith? We get our faith from God. We all get a measure of faith when we're saved. That's scripture. Jesus came without measure. Today we want to trust our, put our trust in everything under the sun. I'm talking about the church in general. I'm not talking about any individual church. We need to get our lives back to Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Ghost. Churches today don't want to talk about the power of the Holy Ghost. Well, let me tell you, that's very close to blaspheming because there are three gods in one, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. When people tell you that God does not perform miracles anymore through and by the power of the Holy Ghost, they are blaspheming. They are blaspheming the word of God. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He heals those that are sick. 
not only spiritually, but in the flesh. But we have to have a true heart, a true life, a true mind for Jesus Christ to want to live for him, to pray to him, to trust him, and have our faith in him. Abraham was a man of faith. He believed God. Did he fail, Abraham? Of course he fell. He said Sarah wasn't his wife. Did God forgive him? Yes. Let me tell you, all this judgmental in this world today about our governments and about the things that's going on in this world, those judgments can be changed by the power of God. We need to not bicker, complain so much. We need to get into the Word of God and say, God's still in charge. I don't care about the Democrats. I don't care about the Republicans, the Independents. My faith is in God. My faith is in Him. That if enough of us pray, enough of us get on our knees, if enough of us search out the old pattern like my grandmother did and my father and people today, there are many Christians upon the face of this earth that serve God and know that His will will be done one way or the other. Ha, we may want to change the Bible. We may want to change the Scripture. We want to try to water it down and bring it down to where we understand it. When in essence, it's so simple. Pray to the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Pray to Him. We look on our life. I look on my life the many times that I could have passed on from this life because of a car accident I was in or this and that, uh, an accident here and there. But God's grace saved me and brought me to this point. Uh, it was nothing I did. It was by His mercy. Uh, and no one called uh, and called God on the phone or on the internet and said, hey, it's about time you send your son into this world to save this world. God did it because of His grace for us. Uh, I don't mean to be loud, but I mean to be to the point. Uh, the Holy Ghost uh, is what I feel in my life right now. Uh, does it break the yoke? You better believe it breaks the yoke. Uh, would I still make mistakes and sins? I'm in a fleshly body that's in a fight. Let me tell you right now, God does not want someone uh, that does not stand up and teach his word. Uh, he does not want someone that's a secret agent. I don't want to say anything about God. Uh, at a Christmas party, it may offend somebody. Uh, they need to be offended when we speak the word of God. Uh, it's an offense to Satan because he knows uh, uh, that the blood, that everything that was given to us, free and clean, is given by what Jesus did at Calvary. And today we need to understand huh, that the only thing that will get us through this life is not how tall we are, how short we are, how fat we are, how much money we have, what kind of a house we live in. The only thing that will get us to heaven is Jesus Christ. I feel the fire, the fire of the Holy Ghost. People today, I don't need the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Stay away from me. I don't want to be around you. This is the evangelist talking to you. This is not the lay minister. This is the evangelist. The lay minister preaches to the, to the church. He preaches to those that God instructs him to preach to. The evangelist preaches to every individual heart. He's given a message by God uh, for every individual heart in that church and everyone that he knows. Uh, I tell people all the time about God. Uh, I witness for him. Is that enough? No, because his grace is what carries me through. Hallelujah. Secret agent. I don't want to offend somebody. Had somebody push a beer can into my face not long ago. I pushed it right back. They said, you're going to drink it. I did not drink it. I told them I would not drink it. Well, you know, a, a little afternoon drink after everything is done, that's defiling the temple of the Holy Ghost, a little casual drink. Leads to more and more things. They pushed it towards me four or five times. I pushed it back. I don't have to do what somebody else tells me to do. It's between me and Jesus Christ. We need to come out of the doldrums of the world is in such a bad shape and 
Russia's going to do this, the world's going to come to an end and everything. God's still in charge. He's still sitting on his throne. Nobody has dethroned God. Who can tell him to sit down and be quiet? Who do you know that can get in the face of Almighty God and overrule him? He said to Job, where were you? Where were you? You know so much. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the worlds? There's beautiful Christians. People that have dedicated their life to Christ. That's what I want to do. I want to dedicate my life to his kingdom. I want to live for him in his power and his glory. There's nothing like living for an eternal God. And I have hope. My father was a pastor. He said, I have insurance to get me into the grave. I have insurance to get me out. Pray you enjoyed this message. We will continue with the perfect will of God in our next session. I want to follow the leading of the Holy Ghost and be obedient to him. We love you.